how pleased I am to welcome to this show Nancy Lynn Harris. Boy, she has written a book that I'm not kidding will rock your world. It's called Invasion Revealed Healing Alcoholism, Mental Illness, and Drug Addiction. Just that title alone should really intrigue you and want you to crack this open and get a copy of it. And, and after my conversation with her off the air, I was completely blown away. So Nancy, welcome uh, to the show. Appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much. Good morning. Yes. Y you know, so we look at... Um, those three things, alcoholism, mental illness, and drug addiction. And personally, I think it's powerful to tell this story because somebody says, well, wow, what happened to Nancy? How did she get involved in this? And I think we should start off by telling people your personal story and what you've had to deal with in your life. Well, as a child, my father was an alcoholic. Uh, so I grew up in an alcoholic home. Um, my mother taught me not to love myself. She said that was conceited. So as a young married wife, um, when my 18-year-old son was killed in a, in a car accident after a drug party, I went to pieces. And I was in depression for about, oh my goodness, eight years and uh, ended up with a tumor in my right ovary that I had surgically removed. But my counselor at the time said that my mother had set me up for mental illness by teaching me not to love myself. Wow. So that, that, and then uh, a little later in my life, I lost another son, my oldest son, who hanged himself. And he was 48 at the time. Um, and my husband died of alcoholism, and he was extremely mentally ill. But we just were not taught as children to love ourselves. Yeah, and that's so much a big part of what you talk about in the book. And one of the things you talk about, and I love this, and I really want people to pay attention that, you know, all of you that are listening, what do you think of when you hear the word conceit? And you say, have we been taught that it's conceited to love yourself, which is exactly what we were just talking about as a child, but what really is conceit? Well, I did some research on the meaning of the word conceit since my mother had said loving yourself is conceited, and yet I had become so ill by following her guidance. According to Webster's Dictionary, conceit means endowed with intelligence and imagination, favorably minded thinking, mental activity, high estimation, ingenious aptitude, discernment, originality and resourcefulness. Synonyms are clever, idea, concept, judgment, self-love, understand, self-esteem, and admiration. The opposite word, conceitless, means lack of understanding. A synonym for conceitless is ignorance. Wow. And I guarantee a lot of people are not thinking that's what it means because we certainly have not heard the word used that way. I know growing up, I never heard the word uh, used that way. And, you know, we talk about self-love. And why do you think self-love is so important and why is it so lacking in the world? Well, for one thing, it breaks the great commandment to love your neighbor as yourself. We're being told to love ourselves and we miss that. We miss that. I think you're right. And I think people don't realize that, just like you said, that is, is what we've, we've heard, but we just gloss over it and we don't process it. And, you know, what happens is in so many of these cases, especially 
when we're talking about pills and drugs and mental problems and people, you know, being diagnosed and, and um, just keep, you keep going down that road. It's like you said, for eight years you were depressed and then suddenly mm -hmm. you snapped out of it. What was it that made you really, really snap out of it? Well, I didn't. Well, I guess you could say I snapped out of it because one day after eight years of this noise going on in my mind, I mean, I was mentally ill and uh, the taking pills, uh, nothing was working. The doctors were not helping me, although they were trying, but I painted my nails bright red that day and I thought I'm going to look inward. I had never looked inward before. You know, like if you hear noise in the next room, you open the door and say, what's going on in here? And that's what I wanted to do with my mind. So I put my hands over my eyes, sat down on my couch and looked inward. And what I saw was a creature walking, uh, seeming to walk across, moving across the, uh, my face, uh, my uh, space, my mental space, moving from left to right. And behind him were four other creatures. They were ghost-like, but I could see them. I could clearly see them. And the one turned and looked at me. And I looked at me looking back at him. And then they scurried to the edges of my mental space and hid and my mind went black. They were controlling my mental space. And I instantly thought that must be what Jesus meant by evil spirits. And I started yelling at them, get the heck out of my mental space. Get out, get out of there. This is my space. And, and I thought, wow, I have hated myself. I have been down on myself. Oh my gosh, you know, turn this around. And from that moment on, I thought, I love myself. I love myself. I have been a good mother. I'm not going to be down on myself anymore. I did my very best for my son. I loved him with all my heart. And I continued that process of self-love for about eight, eight months. And at the end of eight more months, I was so well, I was so well, I had never been that well in my whole life, and I knew it. My, and I, how you know you're well is that your mind is so peaceful, it's like there's nothing going on in there. And I remember thinking to myself, is there anything going on in my mind at all? It was just total peace. I was so completely well. Just by reversing my mind, my thinking from self-hatred to self-love, and anybody can do that. You don't have to go on being an alcoholic mentally ill or disturbed in mentally in any manner, depressed, you don't have to be. It's a matter of the words you're thinking about self. And self is another point. Self means scientifically evolving life force. It's your energy, your vital spirit. It's your breath, your ability to think, to speak, to move, to evolve spiritually. Some people mistakenly believe that yourself is your body. Actually, your body is like a thermometer that registers what you think, positive or negative. Wow, that is, I mean, that is so powerful, talking about self and realizing what it means. And as you say, you don't have to be an alcoholic. You don't have to be mentally ill. No. You don't have to be drug addicted. But you know it's such a hard thing to do. What would you tell people? And we're speaking with Nancy Harris, and her book is amazing. It's called Invasion Revealed, Healing Alcohols alcoholism, mental illness, and drug addiction. How can people start? Right now, Nancy, how can people start that are listening to us? Because I want people to gravitate onto this. Just every time you brush your hair in the morning, look in that mirror and say, I love you. I love myself. I love myself. I give myself permission to love myself. It's wise to love myself. It's not just okay, it's the right thing to do. If I want my life to straighten out, not be screwed up anymore, I love myself. And say that all day long. Say it when you see the mirrors in your car. The mirrors are all around us. The windows reflect us. When you see your image, I love myself. You say it and you say it and you'll change your life. Boy, I, I totally believe that. And you and I have talked about this. You see what's happening in the world. And it's easy to be negative, school, church shootings, all that kind of stuff. And it just seems to be getting worse. And do you think that's because people really don't know how to love themselves? 
Oh, we are not taught to love ourselves. And I believe firmly that if people, parents across the world would begin to teach their little children to love themselves while they're little, this would transform the world. Teach your little children to love themselves. Let yourself love yourself enough to do that. If you love your children, teach them to love themselves. Otherwise, they may grow up to be alcoholics and drug addicts too. What, what do you hope people take away from the book? What do I hope they take away from the book? That there is a way to get well. You don't have to spend your life going on and on, being sick, taking pills that don't work. Uh, I, we have an opioid addiction in this country, in the world, probably. Goodness gracious, how, how much... <sighs> There is a way, there is a way, but it's not through swallowing pills. It's by changing the words you think about self. Mm. I love myself. You have to do it. I, I agree. It's a perfect place to end this. And Nancy, for people to pick up your book, Invasion Revealed, Healing Alcoholism, Mental Illness, and Drug Addiction, where do they need to go? They can go to nancylynnharris.com or they can go to amazon.com. Very easy. Nancy, thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you, dear. There's a Oh, oh, oh.